wish the ring had never come to me. I wish none of this had happened. On today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the Diamond Select The Lord of the Rings 7 in scale deluxe action figure of Frodo. And here we have the figure standing straight out of the box without any crazy poses or accessories. My first impressions? I think the likeness on this character is quite strong, uh, considering that the previous and basically every Diamond Select Lord of the Rings line figure is... You know, we've taken a look at Legolas, he's, his likeness is kind of there. Gimli is kind of nice. We're gonna take a look at Aragorn later. He is maybe kind of the worst of the bunch. And there's also a Moria orc and a Nazgul who, I mean, there's not much talking about likeness, is there? I think the likeness to Elijah Wood on this Frodo figure is quite nice. I really like how the curly hair was sculpted. It's very nice, and I really like the texture on the tre trench coat that he has. You'll see that when the when we take a closer look at the figure. The articulation seems to be nice, and the well, uh, let's talk about the accessories. And here you can see all the accessories that he comes with. He also comes with a build a figure part of Sauron, which I didn't mention in the previous review of Legolas. He also comes with the part. I believe he comes with uh, one of the arms, and Gimli comes with the head and mace, maybe just the head. Sorry, I haven't been talking about that, but as I've said on the first review, I'm gonna have a review of Sauron itself, so I didn't actually mention what build figure they come with. Frodo does come with the biggest part, the torso and the cape, so that's probably why he doesn't come with too many accessories, because the torso and cape of Sauron already make up for the figure, I guess. But, um... First of all, let's take a look at his sword. It's Sting, of course. His uncle, Bilbo, named this sword Sting when he was fighting the spiders of... Um, what forest? I, I'm, I'm not recalling what forest it was called, so sorry. As you can see, this is painted quite nicely, although if they really wanted to bring out all the details, here on this kind of in crevices on the hilt, it should have also been silver, not brown, but I mean that that would have been a really hard thing to do on such a little piece. So I'm not I'm not um, trash talking here or anything. It's sculpted in a really nice silver plastic, and the engraving is there as you can see the elvish engravings. Really like this piece. Even on the um, the arm guard or just uh, the guard and uh, the pommel, there's a little engraving as well. Maybe? Well, not really, it just kind of... It's actually the hills engraving just going on to the pommel a bit, but it's still nice. And, I'll show you, you can actually holster the sword in the scabbard. It's, it's a pretty snug fit, it's not going to fall out, and you can have it there. That's very nice. And now, let's take a look at this little piece, which is the... I believe the Light of Elendil, Arendil, uh, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it in English. This was, of course, given to Frodo as a gift for, uh, by um, Lady Galadriel. Frodo used this to, um, to ward off the big spider. I'm also not recalling the spider's name, sorry. And he also used it as a light source in dark times. And accessory that he should have come with, well, as I've said, he comes with a really big build a figure Sauron piece, so they wanted to cheap out on the plastic, additionally. But a Lothlorien cloak, especially on Frodo, because he's, I think he's wearing the cloak longest. Maybe that should have been a cloak uh, added to this figure, or because Frodo is the ring bearer, I mean, the ring really, and I mean really should have come with the figure. I'm not saying it should have been like a tiny piece that all the, uh, Frodo could hold because it would have just gone lost somewhere. I'm talking maybe like a little chain piece and at the end there should have been a wandering so you can put it around his neck. Again, it's sort of an easy thing to do yourself. You just take a bit of string or a tiny bit of chain piece, put it around there and some goldish thing and that'll kind of represent the one ring. And I've said in the Legolas review, you can just take some fabric, put it here, boom, Lothlorien Loth cloak, but, well, it's kind of cheap, I think, you know, it's whatever, 
these are some nice accessories and the sword as i've said as well very nice so now let's get into the details so of let's the figure. take a closer look at the figure starting from top to bottom as you can see he has really nice baby blue eyes which is accurate the likeness is is there i think that's good correct me if i'm wrong but i can see elijah wood in there especially from the side like this curly hair is pretty nice i don't see i don't i don't see that there's any wash to the hair but um i don't think it's needed i think this brown just kind of pops as well and as i've said here you can see the the texture of this trench coat is really nice it really looks and feels like it's a leather or something really nice and i don't i don't know if this was intentional but uh, of the bottom of the trench coat it's uh kind of darkish they did do this intentionally because you know maybe the bottom of the trench coat would get dirtied the most i'm not sure if that's in in intentional here then then that's very nice but i don't know might just be some factory error sorry if my uh this kind of thing is uh blinding you sometimes i can't really do anything about that um this the, the trench coat is a separate piece you can kind of move it around which is very nice he's a nice matching colored vest as well and he has his uh white shirt underneath all that as well is a little sash or belt the scabbard is really nice i actually have a replica of uh, frodo's sword sting in real life uh sadly it's only the sword it doesn't come with the scabbard but i always wanted to, to buy a scabbard for it very very nice Hey, there's actually some uh, text there. Hey, what do you know? Made in China. Who would have thought, right? And there's some nice hair on the feet as well. It's sculpted quite nicely and painted. Very nice. <laughs> it's kind of weird saying that hair on feet is nice, but whatever. And he does have peck holes on the soles of his feet as well. So now let's get into the articulation. This part. is my personal copy of the figure, so I might be a bit more careful with it. Articulation wise, starting from head to bottom, top to bottom, correctly. Um, there's no hinge. Yeah, Diamond Select doesn't actually use the famous ball and hinge technique that uh, some of the Hasbro figures use. This is they seem to just use a ball, which is okay. He can the hair kind of hinders it looking up which is kind of a bummer because frodo being how s small he is oftentimes he's looking up at people so that kind of bothers me he can look down this much he can do the exorcist move <clears throat> the arms are on a hinge they can also rotate it all the way around goes out this much he cannot do a full-on t-pose as legolas there's a swivel on the elbow and um, single jointed elbow goes almost maybe 90, maybe like 85 degrees. Left hand, swivel, horizontal hinge. Right arm, exactly the same. And the right arm is actually meant for the sword. I'll show that, I'll show it too, as you can see. It's very nice, not going anywhere. It's kind of loose, given how given how small the handle is. But it, it still fits nicely. It's not going to fall out. And the left hand is actually used for the light of Olandil. You kind of have to wedge it in there. And you can use it like that. It's like he's uh, fighting the giant monster in the cave. Come on. All right. Um, then there is, seems to be no torso articulation whatsoever. There might be a, 
No, there is no swivel either, and there's no ball or anything. I mean, there, it looks like there should be a swivel on the torso, but... Oh yeah, there is, it was just really tight. Yeah, as you can see, there is a swivel, it's super tight, wow. And then, the legs are, are on a ball joint, it seems like. His right leg goes out this much. His left, oh, I want to stretch that because this might break off. So let's just say that it goes out this much. Goes forward this much. Goes back this much. Single joint on the knees. Goes about this much, which is somewhat okay. The feet are on a pivot. Goes back this much, goes forward <coughs> this much. And he does have some rock side to side. So now let's get into the size and compare size wise. Frodo seems to be standing at approximately 13 and a half, almost 14 centimeters, which in inches translates to 5.3 inches in height. Here we have him standing next to some other Diamond Select 7 inch scale figures. On the left is the Diamond Select Lord of Rings Gimli. And on the right is the Diamond Select Star Wars Boba Fett. Here we have him next to a 6 inch scale figure. This is the Star Wars The Black Series Stormtrooper. The Here we world. have him next to a can of Coca-Cola as always. And my thoughts on the figure. I think it's a pretty good figure but it definitely lacks some accessories. I don't care about the articulation part because Frodo, you know, he doesn't do much action in the movie. So does, he doesn't need crazy, crazy <clears throat> articulation but one accessory that he definitely should have come with, as I've said, is the one ring. Given that he is a ring bearer and everything, I mean, he went through a lot of trouble, you know, b because of that ring. So they really should have given that to us. The Lothlorien Elven Cloak, yeah, you can easily make a custom one. Still would have been good to have the one as an accessory in this set. And he also comes with some build a figure Sauron parts, which, you know, they, they are the biggest parts of Sauron, the torso and the cape. So I, you know, it's kind of all right, but they almost like they made it, made this figure included with that, uh, with those build a figure parts so that you have to buy this figure, which is kind of weird because I don't, I don't see this figure as being the worst in the entire wave. In fact, I think this is one of the stronger figures in the Lord of the Rings wave. I still think that Gimli is the strongest one. But Frodo is definitely like, maybe, not not second, maybe like third or fourth. But um, I may, I'll i maybe do a ranking, uh, you know, when I finish the entire um, Live and Sec Lord of the Rings wave. The likeness is, is, is there. You know, I like the curly hair. The skin tone is just right. Everything, the um, size of the figure, as I, I think it's uh, with most seven inch scale figures, it's fine, but well, it could be a little smaller, but then again, it would just be less in terms of plastic. So maybe this is fine, I'm not sure. But uh, it's, and it's also nice that you can put the sword into the sheet if you want. That's always something that I like about figures. You can holster the uh, the gear on the figure, that's, that's very nice. So yeah, that was my review of the Diamond Select Loaded Rings 7 inch scale Deluxe Frodo. If you liked the video, consider leaving a like. Or if you didn't like the video, consider leaving a dislike. That's an option for you as well. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, consider subscribing. If you have any opinions on the review, leave your thoughts in the comments below. It was me, the collector, and I'll see you later.